Hey, today we're going to be showing you how to install this 48 inch Dreamline fiberglass shower pan into this renovated space right here. We're going to be putting a brass OD drain in it. We're going to go through every step for you. Come on, let's go. Now these shower pans are really easy to put in, but you have to follow a few simple steps to make it a smooth process. Now the first step before you even get your shower pan into the bathroom is to make sure that your space is prepped properly. We covered that in our last video at the top of the screen. And what that video shows is getting your structure plumb, level, and square. Every corner needs to be square, whether it's the corners of the walls or the corners of the floor. All of your walls need to be plumb or level. And even though we are setting this base in mortar, it's best to start off with a level floor. Now let's show you how to attach that drain. So we are going to be attaching this brass two inch OD drain to our shower pan. In my opinion, brass is the way to go. I've had plastic ones crack before. That's not happening with this. What you wanna do is remove your locking nut, the fiberglass gasket, and the rubber gasket. Make sure you keep both of these, you'll need them. Then go in the center, and we're gonna use the tool that comes with it, and we're gonna remove the caulking nut. Then we're gonna remove our caulking gasket. Now we can fit the drain to the shower pan. So to attach the drain, we are going to use plumber's putty. Now you can use silicone per the manufacturer's instructions, but the putty, in our opinion, works better. So get a nice chunk of plumber's putty and we're gonna just roll it out like this. And what we want is about a quarter inch bead, maybe three eighths inch bead, that's gonna go around the outside of our shower drain. You can just pinch off the rest, make sure it's in there, and we'll show you how to attach it. So from the front side, we're just gonna set our drain in place, kind of push it down, let that putty squeeze out a little bit. We're gonna tighten our lock nut on the back. But here's what is super, super important. You want the rubber gasket first, and then the fiberglass gasket. What that does is help the nut, the locking nut here, slide along the fiberglass and not interfere with cutting the rubber. So we're gonna tighten this up. And then use a big pair of channel locks to tighten it down all the way. Now if this starts spinning on you and won't tighten down all the way, you can put the caulking nut back in the front, put the tool inside of the caulking nut and hold it with a screwdriver right here in the center. Now you should have already dry fit your shower pan a few different times in the last step. And that dry fitting was helping you with shimming up the walls in order to make this a perfect fit and also to locate the drain. And now we dry fit it again and make sure it's level in all areas. And if it isn't, we're gonna have to shim it. Now once you've leveled it out and shimmed it, we're gonna mark on each stud where the top of our lip is on the shower base. Now what that's gonna help us with is when we put our mortar down, we will be able to push this down and get it back level with those points, those lines that we drew on our studs. Now the other reason for dry fitting this pan is to get this shower pipe cut to the proper height. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our gasket and we want our shower pipe an eighth of an inch over the top of that gasket. Then we're gonna mark it with a Sharpie so when we pull this back off again, we can mark it at the right height. So for our model, the DLT1136480, which is a 36 by 48 center drain, our cutoff point is about a quarter inch above the subfloor. So I marked on the floor where we're going to put our mortar. Now that mortar is going to sit between these little feet that are on our shower pan. I also have the shim in place for the only spot on the pan where it's not level. Now, as you can see, I've got a red floor, and what that is, is red guard. Now, this is an unnecessary step for most people, but I want an extra layer of defense on this floor just in case this shower pan cracks and starts to leak. Now, it's time to mix up our mortar, and mortar is what this shower pan company recommends for this shower pan, but there is another way that you can do it, 
and that is with non-expandable window and door foam. This is being done more and more, and actually a family member of mine who was a licensed general contractor in Wyoming used this method. And that method was very successful, but today we are going to use mortar. Now when mixing your mortar, use the instructions per the brand that you buy. But a general rule of thumb is you want a thick peanut butter consistency to it. That's the consistency you're looking for. So where we made our lines on the floor is where we're going to put our mortar. And that's to keep them out of the little feet, the little, little round feet on the bottom of the shower pan. And only support it in those other areas. And that's going to help get rid of any air pockets that might form under there and push this thing all over the place while it's drying. So when we're putting our mortar down, you can mount it up pretty decently. Because when we put our shower pan down, that is going to level it down and push it down. Okay, let's set our pan in the mortar. Now don't push on it down on it too much. You want to get your level set and ready and make sure that you're lined up with those lines that you drew on all of your studs. Now you may have to use shims here in the front temporarily if it needs it. So the last two things we need to do before we let this mortar dry is put on our caulking gasket and nut. This little tool can slip off really easily. So put a rag in the end of your drain pipe before you start this process so that you don't lose the tool down the drain. When you're doing your plumbing drain, you want a little bit of flexibility in this drain pipe from below so that when you crank down on it, the pipe moves down also. Now you can also run a bead of silicone around inside of here on top of the gasket. And then we're going to pre-drill holes into each stud through our shower base and attach it with these flathead stainless steel screws. You want to make sure that you pre-drill all of these because this fiberglass can be fragile. So you do not want to crack it. If you crack it, you're starting over and it's going to cost you about 250 bucks. When you're screwing this in, it's a good idea to keep that rag in the drain or just put your drain grate on. Also, don't put any weight on it. Don't lean on it. Put your hand back on the structure itself. That way, we'll keep that mortar bed nice and level. Now remember, don't put your full body weight on the pan until that mortar is set up for about 24 hours. We're glad you're with us and we hope that was helpful for setting the shower pan and attaching the drain. Now we want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you how to replace rotten T111 siding when it's rotted at the bottom. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.